interacting with scent hounds as they do on the continent and how it can be brought to the UK. Basically, it's just to recover the deer of war for anyone that requires. This main scent hound breeds that are used for tracking on the continent. This is the oldest pure scent hound breed that has a Hanoverian scent hound has its own breeding association which controls everything to do with these dogs. That is the Bear in Hirschman. They've been going since 1890. This is the first pure scent hound. From this dog, by breeding with others, we got the Bavarian. The Bavarian sent down by the association has its own association as well, the KBGS. Again, it's pure sent down, pure sent down, and it is absolutely the most, these are the most dedicated sent down to use on the continent today. And the most popular. There are others, the Dash Brocker, again an old breed, uh, also has its own association with them in Dash Brocker. EV means each of those clubs are run strictly to government rules. All these dogs, especially the Hanoverian and the Hanoverian, are classed as a German heritage breed. They are so revered in the work they do. As we all know, Canis Lupus, the wolf, is where all dogs have emulated from. Over many thousands of years, different wolves were bred and kept in captivity. Some were for hunting, some were for guard hounds, some were for protecting stock. Over many thousands of years, they went to different types of dogs, hunting in a small pack with a human, to hunting essentially as a leech, designed as a sepusia, which was a small pack of wolf like dogs used by our ancestors to, to herd game into areas. Then they decided, shall we say, the protection of weapons to use a dog on a lead because when you go through the early firearms, basically you couldn't hit a back door at 50 paces, they weren't that accurate. So they then realised they needed a dog to find wounded game and started to crossbreed these wolf crosses to end up with a proper hand that would work a cold scent on a leech and stay with that individual scent. That was the main form of then the crossed with others to get the proper Schweichel. Here we are with the Schweichel. From that they bred to get this, they used the uh, hounds, they used uh, dash brackets, many other breeds to get the pure Hanoverian. That was the first correct type that will track one animal indefinitely over other scents and stay with the one animal. Uh, and then from there, across with the Tyrolean Bracker, Tyrolean Bracker, Dance Brandle Bracker, the Bolton Bracker, we ended up with the lighter, more athletic, agile dog with a lot more stamina for working in mountainous terrains. That was the start of the Bilertia, the Bavarian Mountain Scent Hound. Why would we use a specialist scent hound? Hundreds of years of specialist breeding to get a dog that will religiously stay tenaciously with one scent of one animal, often with no blood, just the scent of that one animal, often following in a herd. They are efficient at what they do because that is strictly bred to do nothing else and tested to do the same, and it must prove that. You'll see as the top comes on that they must be able to work to a very high standard before they're eligible to breed. To have an amazing drive and tenacity. They are a special, you know, the Hanoverian, super dog, great strength. But 
when it's a very steep mountainous area, they can in warm weather run out of stamina because of their size. That's when we got the Bavarian, which is a lighter, faster, more agile one. They have to be brave, obviously, because you can't be bore and bore and not a prey species that are a predator. When you corner a ball, that's it. It will fight. It has nothing to lose. Every time it will fight, it will attack you. It will not attack your dog, although it may kill your dog as it has to It will cut for you. That's why the track is where we are safety trackers. The bravery must not be confused with an aggressive dog. It must be calm, <laughs> controlled, confident, family dog, not a bike dog, not a guard dog. You can't risk with people or the sorts of children. Follow a call to set. A wounded animal, or an injured animal, is made me from an RTA car accident. And the consent is, is the scent that's four to six hours old. Up to then, it's still a warm scent. Weather conditions can make a huge difference if it's a very hot day or it's a wet day or snowy. So the scent will cool quickly as warm as afternoon. It is obviously down to condition. What makes a special is the scent out. Training, as you all know, the training of any breed of dog is as important as the breed of dog for the job it does. Without training, special training, best bred hound is just another dog. To get them to a level to be called a tracking dog, a proper accepted Schweizer, you have to track at least 40 wounded animals every year and at least the same amount of artificial tracks for training. Before these dogs can actually go and track legally in Germany or in the both the Hanoverian and the Bavarian have to do the pretest. The pretest is a very difficult artificial track laid with centuries, which I'll show you later. And it's very difficult and it's always in areas of high concentration of gains and distraction. To get the dog to be able to pass this test, test you need to at least do 60 to 70 tests a year, the tracks a year. I don't like the mic, it makes me arm hurt. I hope you can hear now. Becoming a specialist takes at least three years of work. As many as, as I say, 70 artificial traps a year and hopefully a similar amount of natural traps on wounded animals. A sent out by breed is suitable for seeking wounded animals and only hard work and practice will make it a proper send out that can cope with any track that it has to follow. They are taught to be when they're on the track following the wounded animal, they must be, they must speak. And when they are maybe kilometres away from you, stay with that wounded animal and they and they and they. Before the invention of garments and tracking collars and GPS, that was the only way. The handler himself also has to have a thorough education. These dogs are not for uh, complete novices, people who've never owned a, a working dog. You have to understand the full range of shots on a deer or boar. You must know what the hunter will have been doing and what to expect. It takes a long time. You have to be an expert in estimating from what you see on the ground where the animal was hit, the strike point, where it was stood when it was shot. Not where it ran off to and where the first lump of blood is or whatever. It's there. The evidence is at the strike point. 
You have to be able to analyse every situation, and that takes a lot of basic natural work. The skills that you have to be, that you practice and the decisions you make will result in either a failure or a success. One wrong decision with ball can also cost you and your dog your life. They're, in this country, as you all know, bar is spreading. And very soon, on most stalking areas, you will have bar in the next 10 years. Bar, I will tell you now, do not like being shot with a 243. It doesn't kill them, it's not big enough. And believe me, the next person that bumps into it is going to suffer. You have to practice reading your dog because reading your dog helps you to make that right decision. You, we obviously know whether it's a picking up man or a terrier man, you work as a team. You're supposed to be the brains, the dogs, the nose and the teeth. Only experience in, in working with your dog, your hound, teaches you your dog's strengths and weaknesses so that you know when you need to help him and when you will let him work with his own initiative. Some dogs are fantastic on a scent that's 60 hours old, and they might struggle on one that's 12 hours old because of conditions. Each dog is an individual, and you must know your own dog's strengths. Training starts at an early age, and this is teaching a dog to bear if there's any movement on that animal. What they must not do is go straight in, grab it by the throat, and try and kill it like a rat. People that use terriers, terrier by nature, wants to get home, doesn't it? It's illegal to track boar or red deer in Denmark and Germany because so many have been killed and got their handlers killed and injured. That's why you have to be a Schweinchenfuhrer to track legally in Germany. This is the terrain I track in. It's the Palatine Mountains and a forested area in southwest Germany. It's 798,000 acres of uninterrupted forest and mountains. No tarmac roads, it's the biggest single man-made forest in West in Germany. Well in Europe actually. It's severe terrain, heavily wooded, lots of cover, thousands and thousands of bar. But when you're tracking, that track may have been rooted up, slept on, walked across by many other animals. And your dog has to work in that terrain. This is our first test, the pre-test of Volpro form. Your truly stood there with his dog. And there are 12 of us in this test. Each one must pass this test to an extremely high standard, and it is very strict. There were 12 of us on that test, and only three passed with enough points to breed, two passed with enough points to track, the rest were fails. This is a black red Bavarian, which they just do throw up occasionally. But for all this dog actually passed the test to a high standard, can never ever be bred from, because we don't allow black and tan dogs. They have to be red with a black mask. It's the coat type true to the breed. Black, we don't want black and tan dogs. So no matter how good he is, he cannot be used for breeding. The exams and tests, well, we have to do two. First is the vote proof form, and then, as I've ex explained, that has to be completed by the handler and his dog before the dog is two years old. They have now introduced a little bit of leeway, as in extenuating circumstances, because they've allowed the UK SHA to be part of the KBGS, and therefore, because of travelling times and everything else, we can be a few months over two years. But you must pass this test by the time the dog's two. 
by the time the dog's five six or six years old, it must do the hot proof on. And there is another reason to both of these tests. The hot proof on is a natural trap, which is impossible to do in the UK at the moment, because we don't have driven game. Obviously there are lots of driven game and they shoot boar under the moon. And in Germany, only the old men that are rich go out because they have huge hunting grounds and they're 70 and 80 and can't see anything. Can't tell which way the boar faces sometimes, so we get lots of traps. But that's the, na that's the whole proof on the natural trap. The vote proof on is your pretest, and your dog cannot breed until it's passed the vote proof on. And then, only if. I have no idea why it's doing this. Anyway, the vote proof form must be passed by the two, and that then gives your dog permission to breed one litter, whether it's a male or a female, and only if invited to by the breed master of the KBGS. If your dog passes the vote proof form with a high enough score and is eligible to breed, they will contact you in the future if they require your dog for breeding. To be strict about quality, confirmation, and the, all the health tests that we have compulsorily to do and to pass. The whole proof form is the natural trap on a wounded boar or a red deer, sometimes a, a mouflon if it's in the Bavarian or Austrian range. The animal must go at least a minimum of 500 metres and it's scored on a first, a second and a third. If you find the animal almost dead, no, almost lifeless, you'll get a third. If it goes more than a kilometre and it's got a bit of fight in it, when your dog gets there, it's a second. If it's full of fight and you have to battle with it and the dog must hold it for bay maybe two or three times and it does that well, and you're continually followed by two judges. You are judged, the hound is judged, and you must kill the beast cleanly, humanely, safely in any situation. And that may even be with a 150 kilo Kyler on your hands and knees in thorns trying to kill it with a large knife. Then you get a first and a free trip to the a and &E. The tests book examine both hound and its handler or leader, Schweifer and Führer. Sent hound, Führer is leader. It doesn't mean it's a relation to anybody else. The abilities of both are tested constantly. Therefore, we will not allow untrained or unsuitable handlers going out tracking with a dog that are of substandard or lacking ability. It only causes problems and the risk of other people getting seriously injured. That's the group photo of the, our team for that day. This is in the Feltzerwald region uh, near Igelbach. Uh, and it's, that's the bottom of the valley and it just goes up from there, whichever way you look. When you're training your dog, you must train for every situation whether you're in crossing fields with horses or sheep, roads, the dog must be able to cope with every situation. So we constantly train. The difference between artificial tracks and natural tracks. When we're laying artificial tracks, it can be 500, 600 meters for training, and you put your right angle turns in, a back track, a star shape, but they're usually around a thousand meters. You might have your strike point with the information. You might have a wound couch that your dog must show, tell you that the animal has been laid here, we're still on the right track. You must investigate that thoroughly. It will tell you if it is the right animal and everything else. The natural track can be like this. 4.6 kilometers is average for a, a boar track. Red deer can be anywhere up to 50 kilometers. And 
they don't go in straight lines and little right angles. They go round and round and they do back tracks and dead ends. They're, there's every kind of terrain and bore are very difficult. This is just another one off a Garmin that shows the twists and turns and it's gone left and right and the two back tracks there and then gone on again. And then it shows you the wound beds.